Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a comparison between a Ram 2500 AEV Prospector XL and the Ford F450 Goliath. Now, this might seem like a comparison that doesn't make any sense, but hear me out. Both of these are crazy modified diesel trucks from two different manufacturers. Now, they have two completely different uses, right? The F450 Goliath is kind of like this intimidation armored truck that's probably going to be uh, used for uh, crowd dispersal. And then you've got the the Ram AEV that is this crazy off-roading diesel that's probably going to be used for overlanding. But both of these trucks, like I said, are crazy modified diesels with giant tires and lifts and all that kind of stuff. And ultimately, both of these trucks are probably going to be purchased by extremely rich people that are just going to mall crawl with them. So I figured it'd be a fun video to do a comparison between them. And I guess we're going to decide which is the cooler truck and which is the better mall crawler, I suppose. <laughs> With that being said, before we get into the video, I do want to mention that my car buying course is available. Link in the description down below. If you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, definitely go look at that. It's extremely affordable. Let's get into the video. Starting things off under the hood of the 450, we've got the 6.7 liter power stroke V8 diesel. Goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. It's good for 475 horsepower and then 1,050 pound feet of torque. And so, yeah, pretty crazy setup. And uh, this particular setup on this truck needs massive power. Now, going over to the Ram, we've got the 6.7 liter Cummins. It's an inline six, goes through a six speed automatic known as the 68 RFE, 370 horsepower, and then 850 pound feet of torque. So, this is down on power and torque uh, quite a bit compared to the Ford. So, the Ford so far in this comparison, I guess, is uh, winning a little bit. Now, this big of the truck is an interesting combo. So it's basically like an off-road F450 combined with a, you know, kind of like police utility vehicle, if that makes sense. So it's armored. And then on top of that, it has all these off-road bits. So you can see the lights everywhere. You've got the sirens there on the front end, which can be changed to do like blue and red, for example, just, you know, normal police colors. Obviously, we're not allowed to do that. So that's why we just did the white lights there uh, with the front end. But uh, you can see here with the uh, hood itself, uh, that piece, um, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that like the whole front end pretty much was armored on the truck. And you guys can see just how like aggressive everything is with the fender flares there. And then the front bumper with the bull bar, just craziness. And notice you got the winch there. So again, it's, it's this interesting combination where you've got all the armoring uh, on the truck. And then you also have the off-road stuff with the truck. But stance-wise, it's massive. Like this is one of the big, this is the biggest vehicle I've ever reviewed personally on the channel. Definitely the heaviest too. Um, I think with the armoring and all the off-road stuff that's been added, the truck's like 10,000 pounds or something. It, it was some ridiculous amount of weight. And so, yeah, I think it looks great from a front end uh, perspective and the stance with it's great. And so if you take away the armoring and you just look at it from like an off-road truck perspective, it's, it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty enticing, right? Uh, now, going from that over to the Ram side of things, uh, you can see not nearly as much from a light perspective. We do have the cab lights there at the top. And it, everything's kind of like miniaturized on this compared to what you have on the Ford. Uh, so you can see the LED lights that come stock with the 2500. Fog lights down below, also just the stock lights that have been built into this kind of like bumper system they have with the light bar. Uh, again, it's really aggressive looking. Uh, and you can see there's the winch. So both of them have winches, right? And they both have pretty aggressive bumpers. Uh, and it's, it's crazy because this truck looks crazy in person. The, the Prospector really does. But compared to the Ford, it's like, ah, uh, not so much. Um, so those are 20-inch wheels, if you guys are wondering. I'm pretty sure it's 40s on this truck. Um, I might be off, but I'm pretty sure they're 40s or maybe a little bit bigger. Either way, massive, beefy, off-road tires. You guys can see 400 and, or 365, not 465, 365 millimeters in width. And then notice the Fox shocks with the DBL design suspension. Uh, so the truck is lifted compared to stock. I mean, that's what you have to do um, for a truck that's uh, this big and has tires that big as well. You can see the whole suspension set up there on the front end. Pretty cool stuff, if you ask me. And again, you can see here from the side profile, it's, it's hard to tell on camera, I know. Um, but I, I mean, the truck had to have been at least eight feet plus tall. Like it, it seriously is just that's why I called it the 450 Goliath, guys. Um, 
You can see also with the fender flares just how massive those are from a side perspective. And uh, yeah, charging to the snow, that was such a funny video to film. Um, also, so a lot of people asked, like, where did the dually go with this truck? Uh, and so here's what they did is they literally rehauled the entire suspension system of the truck. So they got rid of the leaf springs. They got rid of the dually axle setup and they went to single rear wheel. And then you guys can see the springs and everything they added here into the rear. Um, so yeah, no leaf springs at all with this truck. It's a pretty interesting, uh, setup. This would make it do a lot better off-road cause you're gonna have more flex with this suspension system. And then you guys can see the Fox shocks there in the rear. But yeah, definitely not a cheap thing to do. Thing I was wondering when I reviewed this truck is I was curious as to why they didn't just build this off of a 350. Um, I know there's benefits to doing the 450, but yeah, I was thinking that if they did a 350 instead of a 450, just a single rear wheel, that would have been easier to do the whole setup. But yeah. Anyways, you can see here with the fender flares and everything, just how you've got like the venting there that looks pretty cool that has the logos and all that. And again, just, just remember, those are 20 inch wheels, not 17s or 18s, those are 20s. That kind of gives you a sense of scale with the tires on the truck. It's so funny, usually 20s like fill out a car's wheel wells and on this truck, it's like, no, they're little tiny things. Uh, and if you guys are wondering, the whole side of the truck is uh, armored, like everything's armored around the truck itself. And then that's for a smoke screen exhaust. So that's again, where it kind of mixed between the off-road and police stuff. Anyways, uh, this one's got 40s uh, as well. Um, but smaller wheels, so you can see that the tire kind of looks a little bit different uh, in terms of the setup because the wheel is a little bit smaller compared to the tire, right? Um, so maybe that Ford actually, because the wheel tire uh, setup kind of looks very like similar in terms of proportions. So maybe those were like 41s or 42s actually. Anyways, you can see here Prospector XL badge there on the side. Uh, and again, the stance on this truck's great. Uh, looks fantastic and it's massive in person, uh, really is. And you can see here with the suspension set up uh, with the truck in the front and in the rear. Now, the reason that AEV did a 2500 and not a 3500, you guys might be wondering, is the 2500s have coil suspension, 3500s have leaf springs with the rams. And so the coil suspension is going to be able to flex a lot more off-road. And this ultimately is an off-road package. So AEV doing the 2500 is very uh, smart with this package. Uh, again, to make it so it's more practical from an off-road perspective. Now, I also think it's cool they put the spare tire there and the bed. That's very smart. Uh, you guys know I'm huge into off-roading and having a spare tire on the bed versus underneath the truck helps out a mass amount because if it's under the truck, you're going to get caked with mud and sand and other debris and everything, and then it might be unusable. I had that happen with my Gen 2 Raptor, so definitely like that. And then you can see here with the little 4x4 sticker, notice the LED lights from the factory, AEV, and uh, you got the Cummins badge there on the other side. And then you can see here with the rear bumper, definitely looks aggressive, has recovery hooks on it. And again, you guys can see the other vehicles around this, like the Durangos and the half ton trucks and everything. And there's a quick look at the rear suspension. Uh, so it's, it's funny to see like a lot of the similarities between the trucks uh, and then also the off-road side steps and everything else that's happening underneath. Um, popping back over to the Ford, you can see here with the door panel on the rear, uh, I've got the, this one's built off of platinum 450. So you've got pretty nice materials on the door panel itself and the rear. Uh, and then the windows do roll down. They are bulletproof. So you can see slow roll down and the glass is very thick. So it's kind of uh, interesting with that whole thing. It takes a second to get used to. And if you guys don't know, um, with uh, bulletproof uh, glass with the window motors, you actually just hold down the window switch and you can continue to hold it down. The motor will run, whereas regular cars don't do that uh, with regular windows. So it's uh, something you like, you could literally just blow the motor if you hold it down for too long uh, with the armored glass, if you guys don't know. And then this on the back was just telling you guys that you've got, everything's bulletproof back here basically, uh, including the windows there in the back, the whole bedside, bed cap, all of that is bulletproof on the truck. And that's why this particular truck's so heavy. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see both these trucks off-road because this truck with all the extra weight, um, you know, it's got, I think this truck has more ground clearance uh, because it's a little bit taller and everything, but with the extra weight, it'd be interesting to see how it uh, handles off-road compared to the 2500 being a lot lighter than this truck. And then notice here with the seats with all of the leather throughout, and then, you know, being a super duty, tons of room there in the back with the super crew. And then you can see there with the bed cap area. Uh, I noticed mostly reflections. It's kind of hard to see in, but uh, yeah, being 
a 450 you've got a pretty big bed and so tons of storage space there on the back and it's all locked up uh, as well which is another cool thing uh, popping over here to the interior of the 2500 so notice with the door panel this is built off of a laramie uh, if you guys are wondering so this interior is not going to be as nice as the platinum interior with the ford but still really nice like luxury based interior you can see the rubber floor mats all that uh, and also the cab space in the back is a little bit smaller with the ram compared to the ford uh, crew cab versus the super crew in the ford and then popping here to the front door panel with the 450 uh, you guys can see here we've got really nice materials all over and you can see with the mirrors themselves uh, you've got the giant trailer mirrors that come with the 450 it still has the mirror extension so i still have that practical application and then with the platinum seats again really nice from a material standpoint i think they look great as well and notice here with the platinum logo down below you've got the pedals and then you've got the parking brake with the pedal adjustment and uh, notice also here with all the light controls mirror lights uh, and then you've got a bunch of different switches uh, basically there are switches for the sirens uh shocking door handles is what this truck also had so you've got a switch for shocking door handles lots of crazy stuff <laughs> And uh, one of them, I believe, was also attached to like a tack release. So the truck literally has like everything from a defense stand. Well, not everything, but lots of things from a defense standpoint. Now, uh, popping here to the Ram. Uh, notice here with the door panel itself. Uh, again, just a Laramie door panel. And then you can see the mirrors, which do a blind spot. And then AEV and the headrest again. They just change the headrest, but they keep the seat stock. So you can see it still has even like the Laramie logo on it so they don't change anything uh, with that and then the light control just up above and then you've got that for the outlet steering wheel is manually adjustable on the ram and then moving back over to the 450 you can see here with the steering wheel nice for material standpoint and uh, notice that you've got the column shifter with the drive mode so you still have the drive modes and then the manual shift function as well and then again uh, like i said so i can't remember the exact setup with the buttons but basically tack release electrocuting door handles siren button as well uh, with the uh, lights uh, and uh, you could also do sound with the truck so it, it was super loud uh, that's why i didn't do it in the video because it's very very obnoxious and so it's crazy all the stuff the truck has but notice you've got like a stock ford gauge cluster and look at the fuel range on the truck it's not even full and you have that much range to empty. Massive fuel tank. Maybe that's why uh, they did the 450. Is because uh, you can get a bigger fuel tank with that than a 350. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys know that. I'm not like super well versed in Ford fuel tank specs, okay? Anyways, you can see this has the full 360 camera system. Now this isn't a 2022 Super Duty. So that's why it doesn't have the big 12 inch display. Uh, but this display still works fine uh, response time's great on it and then i'll see analog controls down below We've got heated cooled seats dual zone climate you know all the normal luxury truck stuff and you have massaging seats so imagine you're like driving through a battlefield with this truck right getting shot at and you're just getting a massage <laughs> funny um and then you can see here uh with the controls and then there is the uh, pa system so you can uh, say you know stuff like your mom goes to college if you guys follow me on instagram then yeah you understand or if you obviously if you watch how i met your mother but but if you follow me on instagram you'll understand you'll understand uh it's cool though that it has that and then you can see here up at the top of the auxiliary switches so uh, those are tied into the different lights on the exterior of the truck and then you can see here with the panoramic center so again it's got a normal luxury truck stuff that's what that's what this truck's so ridiculous to me is, is this crazy offering package and then it's tons of luxury features. And then on top of that, it's fully armored. And it has like uh, just crazy stuff like tack release. It's just insane. Popping over here to the Ram. Things are going to be a little bit more normal on the Ram side of things. So you can see here with the steering wheel, uh, you've got leather trim all around with the steering wheel. And uh, you'll notice we've got like our gear limiter. You've got your cruise control. You've got voice command controls, all of that. Radio controls in the back. Pretty normal setup. And then column shifter doesn't have all the controls on it like the ford has uh, but aev does give you custom gauges uh, that's one of the benefits of getting an aev ram because like ford for example has gone to digital gauge clusters for some of their trucks so you can't get a custom gauge cluster but with ram having half digital half analog uh, when places like aev do custom builds they can you know change gauge cluster nose fuel economy all that kind of stuff there which 14.2 uh, i mean the truck doesn't have a ton of miles on it i mean it's not too bad for having massive off-road tires uh, 12 inch display 
Uh, now you guys know with this is a 21 uh, with the 22 rams they did upgrade the infotainment system they changed it a little bit i've had a lot of people complain about it um if you own one let me know but i, I that's just what i've heard is people prefer this version which i have this version in my in my truck and so that's kind of a setup that i prefer but you notice really good camera system i love how you can see the spare tire there in the bed uh, you can see viewpoints all outside of the truck so both of them are great from a camera system uh, perspective and you both can't both trucks you can't see out the front camera because of the crazy bumpers that they have and notice you've got the auxiliary switches down below uh, which this is something that frustrates me the heavy duty trucks have uh, quite a few auxiliary switches more than what the t-rex has which is frustrating to say the least because t-rex is like four I've already used up all of them. Uh, hill descent control, which is very important. Um, now, both the trucks don't have four-wheel auto. They have more basic four-wheel drive systems compared to what a lot of modern half-tons have. So it's kind of a downside with heavy duties nowadays. And then notice all the padding there on the dash and everything. And again, it uh, has the dual glove box set up. S still Laramie, right? At the end of the day, wood trim. And then you can see up top here. Now, Ram still doesn't offer a panoramic center on their heavy duties. So you just get a regular center power setting window. Uh, and then you can't, this one doesn't have it, but you can get a camera mirror. Uh, with the truck and then uh, we're gonna go over pricing with this now the 450 doesn't have a specific price I'm just gonna have to give you guys a guess with the price so you can see um, with all the options this has uh, after everything it's pretty it's actually pretty expensive it's like hundred thousand dollars for this truck uh, the Ford on the other hand I would estimate so fully loaded 450 plus the armoring plus the off-road build I would imagine that trucks at least three hundred and fifty thousand dollars if not more Whereas this truck, right, $100,000. So that it makes the Ram look like a bargain, right? Uh, so here's my final thoughts. Uh, the Ram, right, is a little bit better set up for uh, off-road use because it's not nearly as heavy. But if you took away all the bulletproof stuff on the 450 and made it a lot lighter, that would be a crazy off-roading machine. Obviously, it has more power, more torque with the power stroke. Now, in terms of driving, after driving both of them, they actually both drive really well for uh, heavy-duty trucks. Um, I don't really have a preference one or the other. I will say the Ram does have better turn in everything but it's just a smaller truck so that's kind of uh, what goes to that and so yeah i mean it'd be they're so they're so cool the 450 obviously looks so much crazier than the ram and so it has that special feel but i don't know if it's really worth three and a half to four times as much money as the ram and so i mean it'd be a really tough pick for me but i mean if i was just looking at it from a financial sense if i just wanted a crazy off-road heavy duty truck I'd probably go with the Ram because, I mean, again, $100,000 versus three fifty. dollars Again, even if you take away the armoring, you're still probably two and a half to three times uh, as much money for the Ford. Rough, I mean, depending, right? Depending on a lot of stuff. So, yeah, let me know which truck you guys would pick.